Hi, my name's Hannah. I have anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis, which is the inflammation of the brain. This has left me with an acquired brain injury and a chronic illness. So as part of Encephalitis Awareness Week, I thought it would be interesting if I brought you along what a day in my life would look like living with a chronic illness and an acquired brain injury, and hopefully share some tips that I've learned along the way. So for the majority of my illness, most days start off with medication. It's what helps me get up in the morning, it helps manage pain, and it helps me get through my day. Definitely advise in investing in one of these medication boxes. I got this off Amazon and it's really, really good. It helps me keep track of what day of the week it is and whether or not I took my medication, especially at times when I couldn't remember if I took it or not. At least if the box was empty for noon, I would know I took my medication at noon. Also, I have a little bag to keep all my medications in because they can definitely pack up. Uh, this time last year, I was on 22 tablets a day, so um, it was hard to keep track. I would also suggest keeping a diary of where you're at that certain week if you're reducing medication. This is one that my mom made for me last year when I wasn't able to remember. Um, she took over my medications, which is something I would advise is to get somebody that you can trust and that is around you often to help you keep track of your medications if memory loss is something you deal with. So I know I look a bit funny, but this is something that I would highly recommend for anybody that suffers with chronic migraines. This is something that I've suffered with chronic migraines and neuralgia pain. Um, this I got this from a place called Cold Deck and it's... Uh, you get these little ice cube things that you put in the freezer and you stick them in your pack here and it's just like an ice pack and I find it really helpful for migraines so that would be something I would definitely suggest investing in. I'm sure you can get it in the chemist nearby as well. So after breakfast and medication I'm off to work and this is something I never thought I'd be able to do after being sick but um, I'm really really lucky that I work in a very supportive accepting company. Um, my top tip for going back to work would be one, don't rush it. Take your time at your recovery. Recovery from a brain injury and encephalitis. There's no guidebook. There's no time limit. Go at your own pace. Um, I definitely went back to work too soon and to a place that wasn't very accepting of my illness. And it was really, really hard. So I kind of learned the hard way. So that would be my top tip is to take your time going back and to find a place that really accepts you and understands that you might take time needing to do tasks, you might need to go for appointments, you might have infusions, things like that. And I'm so lucky that I am in a job like that now. So I'm having my daily nap now. It's mid afternoon and this is usually when I crash. I'm very good in the morning, so I try to get a lot of my work done in the morning and leave kind of the other stuff to the evening that isn't a priority. Um, I did a lot today because I was out the house for about three hours and that is a lot um, when you suffer from chronic fatigue. Um, so yeah, I would suggest having a nap, um, even if you can't go to sleep during the day, just close your eyes, rest your head. It needs time to recharge. So it's about half nine now and this is kind of late for me to go to bed but it's Saturday night so I am going to bed a bit later. On the weekdays I usually start getting ready to go to bed around eight, half eight. I'm usually falling into the bed that stage after a full days of work. Um, at the moment I've got my um, diary out. If I have anything to do for tomorrow I'll write that down. If I have an appointment I'll always write that down. Um, if I need to take uh, order new medication, write that down. Um, having a chronic illness, you kind of have to be a secretary for yourself to ensure you stay on top of your appointments and medications. Um, but because I'm not doing too much on the weekend, I don't really have anything to do tomorrow. But um, it's very important that I keep track of everything that I do and make to-do lists. And my diary and my phone are my backup memories. So I always set a bunch of alarms on my phone to ensure I'll remember what to do. And it's okay if I do forget, because we all forget sometimes. And I think it's important to go easy on yourself. So I'm off to bed now. And I kind of just wanted to recap um, the main difficulties and some of the tips that I have from uh, having encephalitis and acquired brain injury. 
The main ways it affects me on a day-to-day -day basis is my fatigue, um, pain with like migraines, and then also um, memory issues and some cognitive issues. So trying to process words or understand things like that. It can take me a bit of time. Um, coming out of that though, um, I think the main piece of advice I would give anybody is just learning to accept the differences that we face now that we have encephalitis and have had it and some of the effects that's left with us. Um, I think um, one of the things that I had to learn the hard way um, when I had my relapse was that um, there is some changes, um, there's some permanent changes and um, embracing them really helps me along the way. Um, getting annoyed at myself for not being the person that I was a couple of years ago didn't really help me. And um, I think the more you accept yourself and the challenges that you face, um, the more likely things will start kind of falling into place and and it's 100% okay to ask for help. And um, I'm sure everyone around you would be more than happy to help out. And the Encephalitis Society is always there for you and they have always been there for me. So yeah, that's kind of my gist for um, Encephalitis Awareness Week. Thanks for watching.